Search engine optimization. It's kind of like teenage sex. Everybody thinks everybody else is doing it, but nobody really is doing it or doing it correctly. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. In this long extended video, I'm gonna go in depth explaining everything you need to know about search engine optimization. There's some major changes I'm gonna be going over as well, including the fact that our SEO phase two no longer exists. Amazon has gotten rid of the pink word update. In addition to that, there's now gonna be a new phase four, which is gonna be around the search query report that is now available on Amazon. So this is gonna be one you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned, check out a lot of in-depth information I'm gonna cover. First, what I'm gonna do is go through and define each of our SEO phases. On my website, we have long expressed this publicly. We've, we've have lots of information about how we do search engine optimization. We are the thought leader. We are the world leader on Amazon SEO. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of understanding or background on how we created these phases and why we did that. Whenever you're trying to sell something on Amazon, there is a lot of misinformation about how the algorithm works. There's an A9 algorithm. In addition to that, there's not a lot of grasp or understanding of like what specifically triggers SEO. And so we're gonna cover a lot of that and the search query stuff will be towards the middle to last part of the video with new information. And if you wanna up your own SEO game, I highly suggest you enroll in our $10 SEO course at mag-school.com. In this SEO course, a lot of in-depth information about how to grow your sales through traffic generation, and a lot of the things we're gonna cover in this video will be certified in this course where we're gonna test you and help you understand it from a very in-depth standpoint. All in writing form, you get a certificate at the end of it. You may have seen some people post their certificates over on LinkedIn. So check that out, mag-school.com. One of the products we're gonna be working on today is my Sage Smudge Kits because we're gonna be using the new Phase 4 towards the end of the video. And, and so one of the things I'm gonna show you is some back history first on how Phase 0 and 1 through 3 work first, as well as that new Phase 2. All right, so when we have a listing like this, when you're first starting out, one of the things that you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to Amazon.com and you're gonna type in the main product. So Smudge Sage Sticks, this is the main product. And in here, what we're gonna do is use X-Ray. This is Helium 10's X-Ray tool. And we're gonna connect over and see like what are the top 10 products. So when we click on X-Ray, we're able to see um, basically the whole vision of the category and quickly identify what we believe to be the 10 top selling products. This is a very competitive niche. You see the success score up there at 14 with less than one star, which means it's not a very good one to launch unless you have some very specific goals in mind. When we look at the list here, you can load more results. So you're not just doing the top 60, uh, but for the most part, usually when you run this, the top 60 will encompass nine, if not all 10 of the top products. You're gonna then download this report as part of phase zero SEO of my Amazon guys own SOPs. And we're gonna look to see like who has the top revenue and who ranks the best. You can download this report and you can copy all of these ASINs directly into Cerebro. So I'm gonna do that next. When you download the Excel file here, you're gonna see that on the left-hand side, there's some that have money symbols in here. This means that it's a promoted product. You can go ahead and exit out of the promotion ones. You wanna go for the ones that are just ranking. So if we were to just type in the money symbol here and uncheck those, and then uncheck that and hit okay, we should be able to unfilter those out. All right, so I deleted out those promoted ones. The next thing you wanna do is filter column F for revenue. And this is gonna show you from top to bottom the monthly estimated revenue according to Helium 10's X-Ray. So now we have uh, our top 10 products essentially. So we're gonna go grab uh, these ASINs right there and we're gonna take these over into Helium Cerebro. So in here, I've selected all of the ASINs. I've gone into the Cerebro tool. You can go to tools, hit Cerebro there, that pulls this up. Type in the ASINs and get keywords. 
the we're going to run a new search because we want the freshest keyword data. But if you've ran searches before, you'll see that they save that data on your behalf. In here, this will take a second to load. And the benefit of loading multiple ASINs during SEO phase zero is we're going to be able to look at the gaps in the keyword rankings and also figure out where most of the competitors are consistently ranking. So if we find a trend that there's five or six of these competitors in the top 10 for a particular keyword, that is a great signal for us to know whether that's a keyword we should focus on. And generally speaking, when you have lots of competitors doing all well on the same keywords, that's an indication in your category, these are keywords that are very important. And so when you first launch your product or when you're trying to redo all of your SEO from scratch, it's a great way to start this process. So when we look at the keyword distribution, there's over 19,000 organic keywords. And of course, we're not gonna be able to focus on even a fraction of these. And so when we hit the show more button here inside of Helium, um, we can come in and decide like how many different uh, filters for the competitor average rank we're gonna chase. So let's say we wanna look at competitor ranks between one and 30 and hit apply. How many keywords of the you know, 13,000 that we were looking at are gonna have a rank between rank one and 30. And that's basically what we're gonna find out with the applied filter. And we find out it's 2100. This makes this significantly easier to start tackling what's gonna be important and what's not. So of the 19,000 keywords here, we know that 2,181 of those are in our target zone. So the rest of phase zero is all about filtering these out and ranking them from top to bottom, from most important to least important. And, and so we can do a lot of things to go about deciding how to do that. You can sort this by search volume. And here, of course, we've got Sage, Sage Smudge Kit, Sage Sticks, and then it quickly falls down below those 7,000, 4,000, getting down to under 2,000 by the eighth or so 10th keyword. And so we know that these top 10 are gonna be crucial. These are gonna get the highest score. And what we can do is export this data into an Excel file and basically rank these keywords from a, a level of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, all the way down. And then we can give this keyword set to everybody else involved in building the listing, including the design team and the PPC team. So when you do SEO work, it's very important to meld together all of the factors, right? When you're trying to grow traffic, there's so many different factors. And if you just hire some dude off Fiverr, and pay them 150 bucks to build an A-plus content, you might get something that aesthetically looks pleasing, but they're not gonna do the keyword research. They're not gonna embed copy inside of your, your listing correctly. Uh, and one of the things I'm famous for is talking about how A-plus content indexes. So going over to my listing just briefly here, as we scroll down, we have already built out a really beautiful listing with a long title, very filled out and thorough bullet points. A plus content, this is the brand story. This is a new module. Many people don't know about this module, but if you've been following our channel, we've been talking about this for several weeks now, and it's one of the most important things you go out and build, because look here, how much text can I add in here? Also, I have four products I can link to, which increases our AOV or average order value, and just more and more text. These, all of these things index. Um, and so I frequently argue with people online about how important A plus content is to have crawlable text because the text inside of an image like this does not help your A plus content indexing or your listing keywords or how people can find you. But the text right here that's crawlable does help you. And so when you're going through and doing your SEO phases for your products, because we know SEO is not set it and forget it. It is very much a thorough thing that you repeatedly do. It's a never ending optimization. Similarly, when you spend money on advertising, you wouldn't just spend $10,000 building an APC, a PPC campaign and then never go back and optimize it. So then why do people treat SEO like this? It's frustrating to me. I don't know the answer to that question, but I will say 
uh, if you go back and continuously optimize and you follow the phases that we're talking about in today's masterclass, this is very important information. So you're gonna put lots of text into your A plus content. You're gonna also set the alt text. Each one of these photos has 100 characters where you can set alt text right there. And so we get used words like organics and campfire and rustic and stuff like that behind each photo. And these are all things you can set inside the A plus content. All right, so when we go back to our phase zero filtering of keywords, we're then gonna rank these, we're gonna download these, we're gonna export them into a new Excel file or CSV, either way works. We've downloaded the Excel file here and you'll notice here in the bottom right, move my photo here for a second, we've got a count of 2,182. So the benefit of filtering the average number of competitors there is that we now have a really easy to use Excel file. It's already pre-sorted by search volume as well as factoring in that the average rank for all of these keywords is under 30 between all of the listings here. You know, what you did not see me do was analyze very closely the selection of the 10 ASINs on camera. You definitely wanna do that. So let's go back through and just make sure we had a good choice on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those 10 ASINs that we selected, I'm gonna look them up manually one at a time. So this particular one here has some sage in it, but it also comes with a few extra um, items like that shell. And we're gonna keep doing that for all 10 of these. So I'm gonna grab the next one here. So here's the next one, it's more of just like a big box of them, so there's 40 of them in there. Here's the third one, a little bit more of a kit option again. So as we go through here, and remember, the one that I'm doing right now is just this one with a three pack and no kits. So if you wanna make sure you're selecting the right items, you do need to be thorough about the 10 ASINs you select. But let's assume the data is correct for our purposes today. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive in and we're gonna add a new column in here. So we'll hit enable editing. And sometimes when you're working with big Excel files, it'll start to freeze your computer. This is very common. Close down Chrome, close down all of the competing programs, save this on a frequent basis, maybe do some version control as well and save multiple files. But in here, what we're going to just type in is just kind of like our, our ranking. Right, so we know that these words at the top here are probably all gonna be tens. Bulk items wholesale clearance, I don't even know if that'll make my list. But white sage, definitely gonna be a 10 on all of these. Medi medi uh, meditation decor might be a little bit weaker and we might give that one an eight. That one's gonna be a branding, we're not gonna focus on it at all. But these are all gonna be really, really important. Now, once we start getting down to the words down here, the, the ranking that we're gonna give them is gonna fall off very quickly. Um, you're not gonna have that many tens. This is probably all the tens we're gonna have. But down here, when we start doing the nines, you might have twice as many nines as you have tens, you might have twice as many eights as you have nines, and so forth, the farther down you go, it'll kind of exponentially go from there. Some of the things that you could do to determine the ranking here, now you, you'll notice I eyeballed these, that's just because I've done this so much, um, but be, when you look at the search volume in here, this is gonna be one of the main factors. And the secondary factor is gonna be the position average rank of all of the competitors. And so when you look at the competitor rank average right here, something that's a 12 is gonna be more important than these 26 and 27. So if we were to just highlight these and put those in yellow just for demonstration purposes, we know that these are gonna be weaker than the ones we put the 10s in. And what did we find? I eyeballed that myself. But this eight probably should be more like a seven based on the lower averages. So one of the things you could do to kind of simplify this down is take some of these columns and hide them. So then you're looking at less data to make some of these decisions. So the competitor average rank, this is gonna be the most important column. So I'm gonna put that in yellow because we're gonna focus really heavily on that. And, and, and then we're looking at the search volume. I'm gonna hide the IQ score because it's kind of just making it harder to look at the search volume. And in here, now we're looking at column D and column S. These are gonna be the most important. And we can see each of the ASINs here. And we may, um, depending on what you're doing, you may say, hey, these three are more important than those or whatnot. And so you might wanna mark those and weight them accordingly. 
Um, but that just depends on what you're looking to do and kind of what your goals are. So we'll put the search volume in yellow as well. And so what you would do is you'd go down this list from Cradle to say Stage by Virginia Grawl, probably not something on my list. Sage Bundle, that's in the average of a 16. That's a really good one. And then we know from experience, this one's also pretty good, probably an eight. Witchy stuff, maybe, I don't know. Depends on how much into the witchy stuff I want to go. Uh, Salivi Blanca. So this is going to be a Spanish keyword. See how highly ranked a Spanish keyword is? This is going to make our list, and I'm going to actually upgrade it from what I was going to give it from an 8 to a 9 just simply because it's Spanish. Now, it is harder to work the Spanish into the front-facing copy. That does complicate things, um, but it definitely needs to be in the back-end search terms and the A-plus content alt text at bare minimum. You may want to put one small module with Spanish on it at some point as well. All right, so White Sage Smudge Kits, that's a really good one. That averages at 11 here, so that's going to make it to a 10. Sage Stick, that's oh, probably a 9. And, and we'll keep going down here. So again, we got another Spanish one. Burning Questions, Margaret Atwood. So this is one where I really have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to Amazon and I'm going to type in the keyword and I'm just going to see what comes up. And so I really have no idea who this woman is, but clearly it's important. So, but on my list, when I'm doing this, I'm going to exit it out. I just don't know what to do with it. Um, Alter within Juliet Diaz. This is kind of a, a little bit on the same, same side of things here. I'm not really sure. So to double check it, we're going to look up the keyword and see what it is. Um, Radical Devotion Guide to Liberate the Divine Self. So probably within the sector of what this demographic's looking for, you got an average rank of nine there. Um, but it's not necessarily what I was going for, but it's people clearly think it's important. So we'll put a seven on it. And so now you would just go down this list, White Spirit. So that one has a rank of four. That one's a nine. And so we just kind of see like which ones are more important, which ones are not. And you can see from here, like how to, how to go about doing that. There are some filtered ways you could probably accelerate this practice and maybe, you know, not do it as manually. So one of the ways you could do that is in column S, you could filter the numbers so that they're between one and 10 and see what comes up. Okay. And then, so these are all the words that are one through 10 and there are 391 of those. And then with the search volume right here, you could create like some sort of rule set like where, hey, if it's above a certain number, I'll give it a different score. So if we just wanted to automate this, we could just say, hey, anything that's a right around 500 to 400, we're going to give a seven. So we'll do it like this. And then, hey, anything under here, we're going to go down to six and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And then once you get down to a certain point, we're going to go down to five and scroll this down probably almost all the way to the bottom. Okay, now you can do the same thing going back to the top here. Look at the filter on, on row or column S that is. So we're gonna go all the way back to the top. We're gonna reset the filter. And in here, we're gonna do number filtering. So let's, let's, clear all the, let's clear all the filters here just briefly. So reset, clear all. Oop, didn't wanna clear the whole Excel sheet. That's no good. Undo, Control Z is your Excel tip of the day. Uh, in the top left, you also have an undo up there. And then in here, we're going to re-add the filter like this. And in here, we're going to go back to column S and we're going to number filter between. So I think we did one through 10 last time. So this time, uh, maybe we did. Let's find out. So we'll do 11 to 20 on this one. And then in here, now we can figure out, okay, so these ones are a little bit less important. So we're going to start at seven with the higher search volume ones like that, go down to a six, like this, and go down to probably about 250, probably keep going faster, down to 250 like this, and then right around 300, we'll do five, and then four on the rest of these. So there's a lot of them on this one that we're doing here. So all the way down for four. All right, so we got one more filter to do for phase zero here. And this is where we're gonna do the number filtering between, but instead of 11 to 20, we're gonna do 21 to 
well, it's got to be greater than 21. So that should be fine. So we'll type in 50 here. Okay, so then we're going to just blank out. We only want to show the blanks. Okay, and then here, these ones are going to be more important, but they're a little bit less on the average rank. So we're going to do sixes to start these. We're going to scroll down. Then it's going to go down to fives. And then we're going to be at around four here. And then three until we get about to 200 or so. Okay, right around there, two. And we're gonna go down to about 100 on these. And then one on the rest. So this essentially completes phase zero. And we've now ranked all of the products from top to bottom on most important keywords. So now, if we clear all the filters from scratch here, we can now see what are the most important keywords from top to bottom. And we could essentially re-rank these on the filter from top to bottom. So largest to smallest. And then here from here, we can now take these keywords and complete the rest of phase one. And that's what we're gonna do next. So that was phase zero of my Amazon Guys SEO phases. And this is where we identified the set of the keywords. We created the value comparing the top 10 ASINs of our competitors, sorted them by highest search volume, as well as the average rank between them, put a value on them. Here are the following phases. Phase one, this is all about indexing. And phase one employs best practices by reverse engineering the competitor listings like we just did and then implementing them. So you're gonna take the keywords from phase zero, put them into the search term section of the back end of Amazon. And here is the thing that most people did not get right until we broke this news in February of 2022. And that is the search term field uses 250 bytes. Not characters, bytes. And the difference between a byte and a character is subtle. A byte does not count spaces, doesn't count syntax, and it doesn't count commas. And so you would be missing out on 20% of your SEO value if you don't fill out the entire 250 bytes. That's the maximum. So I made this graphic to explain this and here is an actual search term field. We'll see if we can zoom in there. And so what you'll notice here is that if you go to 250 bytes, it'll flag this red error message. But up until you hit 250, you have free reign. So what really is interesting about this is that if you are using small or big words, it's not gonna affect your byte count because the spaces between leg and bands and bands and working don't count against you. So previous methodologies would think about using lots of big words because they thought spaces counted against them and they wouldn't use lots of small words. That's not the case. And, and so we broke this news last February. We we're the first to market. All of the SEO tools got this wrong. Very, very critical for everybody to understand. 250 bytes in the search term field. Some of the other things you're gonna think about during phase one is don't put duplicates and don't put commas. These things will take away from the permutations that you gain from having words next to each other with no syntax. So for example, in this graphic right here, hair, hair will already combine with the word growth. It'll already combine with treatment and serum and damages. So you don't need to repeat it. You can simply X out of these secondary reference points. So that's really important to know. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these keywords and we're gonna make the backend search terms. And we like to use Frankenstein for this that makes it really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these keywords and I'm gonna probably go ahead and take rank 10 through seven, just specifically for the search term field. I wouldn't do this otherwise. I'm gonna copy these and we're gonna go over into Frankenstein. So in the side of the tools here, usually how I get to Frankenstein is I'll like copy keywords over from Cerebro, but you can go ahead and copy them directly in by going to Frankenstein here. This is one of my favorite tools. I'm gonna paste these in like that. So there's 1,500 characters right here or 255 words. 
you can filter this. We don't really do much with these filters. It's really not important to, to mess with those too much. And I'm going to hit process. This brings me down to 1,200 characters. So we lost 300 of them. I really wish that Helium 10 would update this to count bytes because that's what we're targeting. So the reason why I express this frustration is to show you that all of the SEO tools are mismanaging characters and bytes. They really need to count bytes not characters to think through this all right so now with that in mind though we can go ahead and surmise from top to bottom that these are the most important keywords to have in the back end of search terms i pretty much don't need to do any editing on this unless we find something like a brand name in the mix so margarita i'm not sure how i feel about that one um but as we go down, spirit to burn for cleansing, meditation stuff, alter, Juliet Diaz. I don't know how I feel about using that, that author's name, but it might be okay. Bulk Lick, Fire, Clara, Elroy, Sachin, Breaking Silence, Twin Flame. So for the most part, this is pretty spot on. By using SEO phase zero, phase one becomes very easy because you can take what you gain from that phase and just kind of bowl it over. Now, I've already launched this product for a few months, and so technically speaking, I don't need to run a phase one on this particular product. Um, what's interesting is that since I haven't edited this product in a couple of weeks, they've, they've come in and added some red flags on here, and so I'm gonna have to troubleshoot those to even save this. So they do seem to be messing with this. Notice how there's not a keyword section up there right now, and they've put it into the product description generic keyword section. So here are the initial keywords we launched this product with, and you're gonna see a pretty strong crossover between the two here, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in and see how, how we got here. So. The value exceeds the maximum number of characters allowed 500. So now we're getting we're getting different error messages live here. Uh, so let's pull up that screenshot again. Here is the former one at 250 bytes. Now we're getting the number of characters allowed 500. So so generic keyword uh, getting a little weird going on with this. Let's see if they've got another keyword field here. Uh, testing this out live since they literally just changed this again. First time I've seen this. And now they're calling it generic keyword. Provide any terms that may be relevant to customer searches, no repetition, no competitor brand names or ASINs. So this is very much in line with the same rule set. Uh, let's see, they used to call this field search terms and now they're calling it generic keywords. That's interesting. I went ahead and flipped over to another random product on my account and you'll see that this section still has the keyword section and it's labeled just like this. So there could be some sort of change to whatever category my smudge sticks are in and that's what's throwing me off here. But we're gonna roll with it and get to it. All right, so, well here, since I'm randomly clicking on my tabs here, if any of you guys want to get a free video review of your product, we'll spend somewhere around seven minutes looking at your PPC, your SEO, go to myamazonguy.com slash ASIN and a member of my team, a business analyst, is gonna go through and just give you a bunch of free advice. Fill this out, we'll send it to you. Uh, yes, we're gonna market you a little bit because we wanna upsell you and try and get you to become a client, but it's free advice, unsubscribe anytime. So here's where we're getting this new error message of 500 characters. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go to Google and I'm just gonna type in byte counter. And let's see if we can get, I've used this one before. You can see I've used that link. So then we're just gonna type in our, our words and I got to 1600 bytes. So I don't think I copied the right thing. Let's go back over to Frankenstein here. So this is what I wanna copy. Let's make sure I hit copy on that one more time. Repaste that in. So I'm at 290 bytes, uh, which is pretty close to where I wanna be. So in here, if we tried to narrow this down a little bit, what would we get rid of? Is there any plurals? Because we don't want to have like, okay, so yeah, right there. We don't need the plural of, of that. So we could cut that one out. Is there another plural in here, like bundle and bundles? We'll click, click get rid of that one. So now we only have 25 bytes to go uh, as we start to narrow this down further. Is there another one? So like the two and the four, probably not that important. Uh, home decor, a eh. lot of Spanish. I like the Spanish in the back end search terms because we can't really use that elsewhere. So I'm going to keep that in the word, the probably can cut that within. Hmm. Yeah. I'll cut that bulk. Probably not important for my smaller sage kit. 
lick of fire, cut the word of, we're at right at 249. So this should work. Let's go back over into, let's see which tab we have. I got a, I got a lot of stuff to cover today. It's going to be fun. All right. So generic keyword. All right. So we cleared the error message we're right at 249. But now I'm just kind of curious, like, does the error message change? I'm wondering if they are going to switch the search term field from 249 bytes and switch it to 500 characters. Because that's that's the difference between generic keyword and the search term field. Super interesting. All right, so let's assume that's the case. Let's go back to Frankenstein and grab some more words. Let's see what we can manage here. Uh, so we're going to add these additional ones, and that's another 222 bytes. We'll just we'll just take it and just run with it here. All right, so we'll delete all this out. We'll go to the very end, and we're just going to paste that stuff in. Let's see if any error message happens. None. So this could be a signal that generic keyword is going to replace the search term field and it's going to be 500 characters instead of 250 bytes. And I did not know that before I started recording this video, did not see that coming. So that's really interesting. We might be getting more search term uh, abilities in the generic keyword. So that's cool. All right. So we cleared the error message on product details, which is different than the keyword section, which uses 250 bytes. So let me show you live how we can trigger this error message. See how it says 250 bytes? So search term field, 250 bytes. But the keyword generic field apparently is allowing to 500 characters. Here's another example of why you should not trust the SEO tools blindly. You need to test this yourself and see it because as I've just showed you, I have different products on my own account that have different rules. Uh, it's interesting. All right, so let's go over to safety and compliance here. So country of origin, we got to put in United States. No big deal there. Are batteries required? No. Dangerous goods? No, not applicable. Product compliance certificate? Not applicable. Mandatory cautionary statement? Uh, no warning applicable because there's not choking. Should do material regulation? Not applicable. Should clear all those out. So that's safety. Let's go over to shipping. Let's see what error is giving me over here. And in here, number of boxes is just going to be one. So that actually cleared everything. Now we got to go back. Okay, so what happened here? So, okay, so now it's telling me 250 bytes. <laughs> so, all right, so it looks like generic keyword is still going to be 250 bytes, even though we had differing error messages populated there. Uh, so let's go back over to this. Let's see if I can recopy this. Go over here. And now that's going to clear that. All right, hands off the wheel. No, no red error message. All right, save and finish. That would complete SEO phase one for the search term field. You would still then go and rebuild the title next. Let's see, I don't have the product up live anymore. So let's go over here and let's go to the Sage kit. So this is, now we're going to decide like, is there anything in the title that we'd want to change as part of our reworking of SEO phase one. The main goal of SEO phase one is indexing. Indexing is showing up in the top 300 results for keywords and you don't need to worry about ranking during phase one, it's about indexing. So during phase one, it is okay to have the same keywords repeated in your title and in the back end search terms. During phase two, however, this is what we were calling the pink keywords update. This phase is now changed. And that's because Amazon in the last week, uh, so I sh I'm shooting this on 416, April 16th, 2022. And in the last week, they actually got rid of the brand analytics tool that showed you these keywords in pink. This was a very lesser known, underutilized tool inside of the brand analytics. We loved it because it made SEO phase two very quick and easy. Before these pink keywords existed and in sort of um, inside of the brand analytics tool, the way we used to do it before that was to use scribbles. And so on my website, I've long kept these screenshots to show how that would work. And this is gonna be the way we're gonna do phase two moving forward. It's not as fast. You're just gonna have to type in all of these things into a tool called Scribbles. And what it basically does is it checks your search term field against the description, the bullet points, and the title. And when you do phase two, you want to do incremental indexing. The words that are already in your title, your bullets, 
and your description do not need to be in the search term field during SEO phase number two. During phase one, we purposely include them because we have repeatedly found through thousands of tests that including the, the word in the search term field in the title and in the search term field at the same time when you first launch the product will index the product faster. So phase one could last two to four weeks. Then you're going to go to phase two and you're just going to take out the extra keywords that are already in your title, your bullets out of the search term field and then replace them with the next words on your list. So if we go back to list to list right here, we started with 70 search term phrases that were ranked seven or higher. We did not get all of the ones towards the bottom here. And so once you do phase two, you would then cut out um, those extra words that are already in the title. So like, for example, if we scroll all the way to the top here, I know for a fact that Sage and Smudge Kit are already in my title. Those are four words that I'm gonna be able to make room for in the back end of the search terms when we run phase two. And so you're gonna be able to take those out of the search term field and replace them with new keywords lower on your ranking list that are not in your title. So the other thing you wanna do during um, these early phases is make sure you get the title correct. So if we look at the title as it currently stands and we look at the important keywords here, of course, we've pretty much hit all of those important ones. Um, we've got white sage, we've got smudge, we've got sticks. All of these ones are really, really well covered. You want to try and get some exact matches on these. That's kind of important. And so let's see if we can get the title back up here. So every time I put my cursor over the photo, it's going over the top. All right. So we'll pull this all the way to the top. And so do we have an exact match for sage smudge kits? Yes, right there. Sage smudge sticks right there. White sage. Yes, that one's good. Witchy home decor, though, is absent. And so if I really was going to try and change up my title, and I'm going to go ahead and do it today, I would go ahead and go into the back end. So we're going to re-pull up the ace in here, hit edit, and go into the detail section, not to be confused with the keyword section, which they just changed. Uh, we're going to change the title. Where did they throw the title? <laughs> they totally changed everything. Product identities now where the title is uh, on my Sage Smudge Kit. So here, what do we want to delete or get rid of? Stress relief probably does not show up anywhere on our, our keyword list. Let's go find out. So if we put this back to full and I control F for the word stress, it does show up, but it's down in the fives. So we can safely remove out stress because it's not important. This is a feature, but it's not a keyword. A feature can be added to the bullet points and you get most of the benefit down there. Now, the word incense, probably important, but what about the word dried? So if we pull up the list here, does the word dried show up? Down in the fours. So we know we can safely remove that as well. How far, how, um, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything. So I'm going to go all the way back to A1 and hit dry it again. Yes, it's down on the fours. Okay. So then coming back up here, this time I'm going to do incense. Uh, and that's in the sevens. So we know we need to keep incense up here. But, but their sevens are kind of at the bottom of the list of a title. So these could probably be reworked. We also don't need sticks twice. So we're going to type in here witchy decor, which is a risky word in my opinion, because it may be off-putting to some people. And what we're gonna do next is see like what else needs to go into the title, right? So we know we've gotten some of these all the way down to nine already. Um, sage bundle, then we got the Spanish word. So sage bundle, probably an important one. So age of sage, white sage smudge sticks, four inch long witchy decor, and the word that we were thinking about using was sage bundles. So I'm going to do witchy decor burning sage stick bundles. And we've got, we don't have the exact match because we got the word sticks right here. So I'm going to delete that burning sage bundles for cleansing house negative energy. Does the word 
negative energy show up here. So delete this out. Where does energy show? Down in the fours. So we can delete that out. Not important. What about the word cleanse? That one's important. Sage to burn for cleansing. So that one's an important one. So as we rethink our title here, witchy decor burning sage bundles for cleansing, but we don't need the negative energy. We can delete those out. Hand wrapped, probably not going to be important. So if we go up to the top here and type in hand, that's down. Okay, so handbook. Well, okay, we don't need that. Handmade. That's in the sixes. And let's just see what else we get for hand. Handmade craft. I'm not feeling handmade is important based on what I'm seeing here. It's not really what I'm looking for. So I'm going to delete those out. And we've got a three pack here. So our title is a little bit on the short side. So we're looking, we're, we're, we're trying to delete things out to make room and decide what's going to be important to add. So one thing we could do is we could go ahead and make one listing include Spanish on it. So that could be one thing to do. I'm generally not a fan of mixing Spanish and titles, but you see how important it is at the nine status. I would consider it sage to burn for cleansing. So do we want to have an exact match on this? We may want to make that consideration. So it's kind of hard to edit the title here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. We're going to add into a new word doc here from scratch, pull that over and we're going to type it out here. And so then the, the word sage to burn for cleansing, where would we put that in? So witchy decor burning sage bundle for cleansing sage to burn for clients. Very, very similar, but it's not exact match for cleansing house, white sage, incense sticks. So I'm, I'm kind of, it's not an obvious one yet. So we're going to keep going down this list. I wonder if I could make this easier. If we could go side by side like this, here we go. This might help us. Okay. So in here, what word do we want to include next? The word spirit may be include, maybe a good one to include age of sage, white sage, smudge sticks, four inch long, witchy decor, Spirit burning sage. All right, so we've got the word spirit in now, and it's not next to the word white. So maybe we want to put it white spirit sage incense stick. So we're going to delete the word sage there. Also, decor like that. I don't know if I want to have the hyphen over it or not. Uh, witchy stuff, <laughs> witchy decor stuff. <laughs> All right, so maybe we'll ditch that over here. Burning sage bundle for cleansing house. White spirit, sage incense sticks, witchy decor stuff. Uh, the altar, nope, not going to go with that. Smudge, sage bulk. Do we have the word? We don't need the word bulk on the three pack. Lick of fire, Clara Elroy, Sachin breaking the silence, twin flame, twin flame. What does MJGK mean? So we'll go to the live Amazon again here, and we're just going to type this in and see what comes up. Uh, so that's a, uh, looks like a streaming artist of sorts. So we're going to ignore that one. Some categories have weirder keywords to work through than others. A burning in my bones, <laughs> uh, smudging. Do we have the, we got smudge, but we don't have smudging and that may not be picked up by the algorithm correctly. Long haul bulk items, ancestry. Uh, incense voodoo, geez Louise, super weird. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that looks like a brand name to me. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not a user of my own product here. So let's pull this up. Um, California might be interesting. Balvini, more Spanish, spell like a champ. Judging angels. So as you go through these, you might readjust these numbers as you actually read the words. Strange A's with Bob Sack. So people are basically buying this stuff and and listening to some Bob Bob Marley and Saget. Hiddenness and manifestation. Crystal glass. 
make this a little bit wider. Uh, money grabbers, carving witch, murder witchcraft. <laughs> it's just going downhill from here, guys. So I'm not liking a lot of how we could go through this. Uh, fresh leaves. That's interesting. Tone. That's interesting. I kind of almost want to go for the Spanish. Basically, as I'm reading down this list, I'm not feeling too good about the title uh, options. So where, how high was the title here? So let's go see what this actual word translates to. So let's go Spanish to English in Google. Type it in here. Uh, okay. Oh, X out of that. All right. White sage to cleanse. So that is a direct translation. So if we thought about this, where could we include this? Age of sage, white sage, much kits, four inch long, burning sage bundle for cleansing house, white spirit sage, incense sticks. So we only need, we don't need sticks multiple times. So I'm going to delete that word. I'm going to put in the Spanish word. Uh, and we're having trouble with the copy and paste, so I'm just going to redo that. Witchy decor stuff. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run with the Spanish word because I feel like the other options are so much weaker. And we're going to run with this. So this may hurt my conversion. This may not be a good idea. But I'm going to go ahead and test it out. So I'm doing this on my three pack. I might have different titles for my other, my other packs, and I'm going to hit save and finish. Okay, so then one of the things I can do then is now that we've done the Cerebro, now that we've done the Frankenstein, we would then go in to Keyword Tracker and we would add these words in that we are trying to focus on. So if we look at the, uh, the words that we just added in for all of these smudge kits and everything else, we would then want to add in keywords to our tracker to see how they're doing. So let's go find the right product. Let's type in smudge. Got various products we're tracking right now. And this looks like my three pack. This looks good. So we're going to click into that. That looks fine. So actions, add keywords. And then these are the keywords we want to add. Basically, the keywords that we used. We didn't use all of these. Um, but for speed's sake, I'm going to go ahead and capture in all of the top seven. So we have room for these. That looks okay. Total keywords, 70. Add keywords. So then, now that I'm tracking the keywords, 10 of those were already in my list, 60 are new. I can then see how my product is doing over time now. So you can click on the product like this. That'll show you all the keywords, and it'll show you over the time. So over time, how is the ranking doing? Here's the search volume. So here's the most important volume up there. I'm at rank number 116. I'm falling off a little bit, not doing so hot. You can look down the list. Some of these are doing really well, others not so much. So the question is, when I go into SEO phase three, which we're going to cover next, I'm going to take this exact keyword. I'm going to go back over to Cerebro. So we'll open this up and go to Cerebro. And we're going to retype our own product in. Now, generally speaking, when you're getting to phase three, you need to have 50 keywords that are in rank 20 through 50 before you start this. If you don't have that many keywords, you're going to not be ready for phase three. <coughs> During phase two, our goal was incremental indexing to swap out some words to index for more keywords. When we get to phase three, throw the rules out for phase one, phase two, and even phase zero. During phase three, you are going to select keywords that you're in rank 20 through 50 on. You can do this very easily by going to Cerebro, typing in your ASIN, go to organic rank section 20 through 50, and hit apply filters. These are keywords that are in your strike zone. These are words that are ready to be tackled. I have 223 on my list, and in here, you could sort it by search volume, and this one right here at 13,000, Sage Candles for Cleansing House. I'm in Organic Rank 20. This would be the most important keyword that I would focus on. By and large, very easy to tell that. 13,000, I'm at Rank 20, no-brainer. 
As you go down the list, some of these make more sense than others. Spanish, again, another really important one. The word pot, questionable to use in this category. Sage smudge. Most of these are already in the title and very good. But the word sage candle for cleansing house, when we go look at the search results, most people are actually selling a candle. Here we have my product advertising, and my product is the highest ranking organic product with smudge sticks in it and not an actual candle. And so I have a competitive advantage by doing that. So if we take this keyword and we think about the title that we built, we may want to have one of the products that we have on the variations include an exact match for this. So next we're going to go into our six pack and we're going to have to clear all the same error messages again. Nice. Uh, and we'd go to the product identity here and some of the same things that we kicked out of the old product. So like stress relief, dried sage incense sticks, we could go ahead and type in sage candles for cleansing house incense sticks. That's not technically a candle, but people use it like one and that's probably going to be okay. So we're going to clear out these air. So I got, you can't go over 200 characters. Nobody cared about the hand wrapped. We're going to ditch that. We didn't need cleansing house was okay, but negative energy didn't matter. So we're going to delete that. Now we're under the, the limit. Uh, product description, same issue here. I think what I'll probably do for this is just copy over some of the work we did. But the other thing you may want to do with variations, technically speaking, variations share the same overall index rank but they track the variation rank at the child level. So if we go back to our product, one of these variations will show up in the search result, only one of them. If I unparented this listing, one of these would have the highest rank, but a second one would then start showing up in search results having its own rank. So if that's true, it may make sense to have differing SEO focuses between the variations. That's because they can, you could have one variation rank for Spanish, another one rank for a different set of keywords like the witchy thing, which is weird, and then, and so forth, right? You could have different variations focusing on different things. So that's, that's a food for thought on that front. You can never have two variations show up in search for the same keyword. So if you have two power SKUs, it's frequently better to unparent them for the purposes of search engine traffic because then they will both show in search engine results. Going back over to Cerebro here, we have 223 keywords. We then look for exact matches to get all of these keywords that we possibly could inside of the title up here, the bullets, exact match anywhere we can repeatedly and into the A plus content, the text down here, the alt text, as many locations as we possibly can. Generally speaking, you're gonna select three to 10 keywords to do this, depending on the size of them, depending on how uh, complicated or the search volume, you may, you may select more, you know, so if we were doing like 10 keywords under 500, I could probably do them all. But if I'm really hyper-focused on this one, Sage Candles for Cleansing House, I would have to get really in depth with the number of locations. Some people say that having the same keyword repeatedly doesn't do you any good. I'm telling you, an exact match makes a heavy impact and having repeated quantities of the same keyword during phase three, this is a specific rule for phase three or after, is a good idea. And that's because you will matriculate. That means move up in the rankings faster if you have multiple references to it. So one of the ways you could see is how much you're referencing is type in control F. And for example, if we wanted to know what is the quantity of the word sage on my listing, there's 129 references that does pull in all the ads. But you can clearly see with all the highlighted words, we have the word sage everywhere. That is intentional. The word smudge, same thing, 43 references on the listing. So you do want to have repeated references when you're doing phase three or after. So to recap, phase three, focus on organic ranks 20 through 50. 
set everything up again, search terms, title, bullets, A plus content, image, alt text, all of them, soup to nuts, and enter in the keywords that are in those phases, those targets. So now, before I get to SEO phase four, I wanna give bring your attention to the fact that there are so many new tools inside of Seller Central. We're just gonna briefly reference them. There's the Product Opportunity Explorer. I think this is just kind of a cute tool. It's, it's worth going in and spending a half hour to an hour just testing it, see if you can find new products, stuff like that. When you're doing your SEO, sometimes it makes sense to start with a product that you're gonna have an edge on and you have high search volume intent with low competition. Next is the growth opportunity section, a relatively new tool where you can come in and it'll give you specific things to do. Hey, you should enroll in Vine. Here's the high impact to that, high value, or you could go to high potential. There's different things on the top left, create an FBA shipment, enroll in Vine, create B2B discounts. These are all tools that are gonna help you on your journey Anytime you improve the conversion rate of a listing, it will affect your SEO positively. Now, I am on the record saying that it's 10 times easier to double your traffic than it is to double your conversion rate. So that's something to keep in mind. Focus on traffic way before you focus on conversion rates. But you do have to focus on conversion rates, especially for that main photo, your CTR, your click-through rate, to get them to the listing to begin with. So those things do matter. This graphic I built to showcase uh, the SEO factors back in 2021, I felt like organic sales were less important, reviews were less important, offsite sales and PPC, PPC sales are on the way up. I haven't put out patch notes for 2022 yet, really don't have a feel for it, and they keep messing and changing up things, that's why I haven't put that out yet. The other thing you need to do is read the help files at Amazon. Use search terms effectively. Here are all the things that they're telling you to do. Now, keep in mind, parse things that Amazon tells you. Believe the rule sets. Don't believe the best practices, if that makes sense. So these rule sets and best practices are kind of intertwined, but these are all correct. Maintain the length of search terms. Use synonyms, spelling variations, abbreviations, lowercase. Don't use punctuation. Separate words with, with spaces. Avoid repetition stuff like that. Don't need prepositions or articles, and it gives examples of those. During our video today, you saw me avoid using those prepositions, case example. Here are the things that are prohibited, can't do that, can't use brand names, can't use temporary or subjective words like best or cheap, things like that. They give you examples inside of these help files. There's also an Amazon search terms report, which gives you the most popular keywords on Amazon at any given time. You do want to check that out as well to get ideas of where you want to frequently target your rankings. You're not going to be able to complete any of the things we talked about today without Helium 10 or another SEO tool. You can go over to myamazonguy.com slash H10 and get a 50% off discount code. All right, so here is what everybody has been waiting for. The new phase four, phase four SEO, and this is going to use the new search query performance report. It's difficult to find out how to get here. I'm just gonna give you a direct link at the top of the video so you can check it out. In here, you can have a link to all of your current brands on the account. You can look at different months and different years. And what's interesting about this is it'll show you all of the data for your products and for your brand over time and basically tell you what is your market share. Your market share can take multiple uh, factoids. It can be impressions in the search funnel, it can be the actual clicks out of the search funnel, and finally cart ads and purchases on the far right. And by knowing this information, we now have the ability to tie conversion and click-through rate directly to keywords on your, your listing. So before then, you had to make changes to your SEO based on whether you indexed or you didn't, phase zero to two, and to improve your indexing and matriculate it from the strike zone in phase three, ranks 20 through 50. But now, during phase four of SEO, you now have the ability to rank based on intent. And so phase four is going to be called market share at my Amazon guy. So phase four, market share. And during this phase, 
instead of worrying about indexing, instead of worrying about what you rank for, you're going to worry about your market share compared to the competition. And by improving your market share, you will have more sales. And you're going to use SEO to do this. The same methodology and tips used during phase three will directly apply here. But instead of sorting this by rank 20 through 50, you're going to go ahead and immediately just start focusing on these at the very top. Seller Central is making this easy on you to know what to focus on. Focus on what's at the top of the rank. So the word sage, we know, is a very important keyword for us to focus on. We know that my brand share is 1%. So for every 100 times somebody searches for sage on Amazon, they see my product one out of 100 times, 1%. My brand share of the clicks, though, is only a three-fourths of a percentage point. So that means I have a click-through problem on the term sage. I'm losing a quarter of the impressions to click through. That's not a good thing, which means I need to focus on that. Now, I may not be able to do it on the top ranked word right here, nor you may you be able to do it on the top ranked word here, but you can quickly go down this list and pick two or maybe three out of the top 10 to focus on. Now, these are specific to brand, but they're not specific to product. So you're gonna have to use some of your own knowledge about your own products. The more products in your brand, the harder this gets. But we know, obviously, that anything related to sage, candles, and sticks is gonna be about my smudge sticks. Versus gifts for mom, I know that gifts for mom is gonna be about a very different product. So if we go over to my Age of Sage store, my gifts for mom, mom spa set, which I'm hoping does really well this year, Back in 2021, I launched this product, and with zero reviews, one review going into Mother's Day, I made $144,000 in four weeks, spent $11,000 on ads, $5,000 on a broad match, gifts for mom, and lo and behold, what do we see in the search query? The word gifts for mom. And so it shows you the query is getting more important the closer we get to Mother's Day. My market share on this is only a quarter of a percentage point on the impressions. That's going to change here in the next couple of weeks. And brand share, again, took a slight dip. And then brand share on clicks and add to carts down to 0.7%. And you can go over further and see the search funnel purchases down at 0.05. So this tells you I have a huge opportunity with the search term here, gifts for mom. Last year, I did really, really well. $144,000 in four weeks. So when we look at this, Control F, Gifts for Mom, it's not currently an exact match in my title. So when I do SEO phase four, I'm gonna go for those exact matches again in every single SEO field. The search term field, the title, the bullets, the A plus content, and the alt text. So we're gonna to go to the back end of this product. We're gonna look at the title right here and I'm gonna put it in at the very front of this product. Now, you can get away with not using your brand name on certain categories like the gift giving category. Others, it doesn't work so well, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I've been able to do it for, for many months, no problem. Um, gifts for mom right there, front and center. As we look down this list, what other words are gonna be related to that? Mother's Day gifts. So gifts for mom, Mother's Day gifts, luxury bath salt sets, soap, bars, body lotion, pampering. We don't need to worry about new mom because we're going for Mother's Day. Box set for women. And I'm going to ditch all references to women and go all in on mom for Mother's Day here. So box set, don't really care about that right now. We're going to redo the entire title here. And because this is already pre-optimized from top to bottom, I don't have to do any research. The research is done. I'm just going to go for these exact search queries and stuff them anywhere I can. So Mother's Day gifts, boom, right in the title. Gifts for mom, Mother's Day gifts, done. What other things do we have? Mom gift basket, boom. Luxury mom gift basket. We're going to type that in. Mom 
gift basket. Soap bars. Hold on. I messed that one up. Okay. Gift basket. We're going to get rid of the word set, and we're going to go soap bars. All right. What else? What else do we see on the left-hand side here? Natural soap, bar soap for men. I have different sage products that this won't apply to. This particular one, handmade soaps for women, maybe. Uh, sage sticks for cleansing house. Nope. New mom gift basket. So on the right-hand side, luxury mom gift basket, soap bars, body lotion, and bath bomb care package for mom, relaxing bath, and body gift set. So as we scroll down and look at some of these words, and I'm not actually, I haven't done this yet. Have they, did they give us a filter for a particular word set? They do not, and I don't see an export. So this is going to make it harder to do this. But what we're going to do is we're going to go look for anything related to Mother's Day or moms. So control F, mom, mom, new mom gift basket, boom, 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 boom. New mom gifts for women. So that might make the list. New mom. So I'm going to take out new mom gifts for women. Put that in. I'm going to go to the next page here. Same thing. Mom, new mommy care package. So the word mommy care. Do we have the word care in here? We do care. So right there, uh, package for mom. Do we want the word new? Maybe gift for mom, new mom gifts, new mom gifts for when we got exact matches on that mom to be gift basket. That's probably another good angle, but I don't necessarily want to because we're trying to get this to any mom out there, any mother out there. We don't want to alienate the non-new moms during Mother's Day. Do we have an exact match for mom gifts? I don't think so. New, oh, yeah, we do. Mom gifts right there. Okay, that's good. All right, what about the word mother? No matches for mother. So we know that mom is the word to use. We've got mother here, and that's the only time we're going to do that. Mom to be gift basket. Not so sure about the word new right now. I'm still kind of mulling that over. All right. So here's the next best mom ever gifts. That's a great one. Um, luxury mom gift basket, soap bars, body lotion, and bath bomb care package for mom for best mom ever gifts. Best mom ever gifts. Boom. Just like that. Uh, we'll ditch that. Okay, the word mom itself, gift for mom after giving birth, gifts for new mom's relaxation, birthday box for mom, mom gift, new mom gift set. Let's keep going. Control F for mom again, present for new mom, birthday boxes for mom, gift basket for mom, spa gift baskets for mom. This will be a pretty good one. So luxury mom gift basket. So how can we, how can we work this in? Luxury spa gift basket for mom, like that. We've got an exact match there. Soap bars, all right. Mommy to be, world's best mom gifts. So world's best mom gifts. World's best mom gifts. New mom gifts for women. All right. This might be it. As we go down the list, any other good ones? A lot of spa, a lot of gift references. So you can see here's the title we selected. Let's go ahead and put it in. So here's the old product title, Mom Spa Gift Set Basket for Women Luxury Bath Set. We're going to obliterate it, completely change it. Gifts for Mom, Mother's Day Gifts. Boom, hit save. We're going to rack in the sales coming into Mother's Day this year and using the search query report. You can do the same thing very easily, no matter where you are in your SEO phases. If you're just getting started, start at SEO phase zero. If your listing is already ranking for 3,000 keywords and you're just looking for a quick edge, use the search query report today and go focus on those top keywords, just like you saw me do for my mom spa gift set and I'm editing it into the title. I'm gonna edit it into the back end of the search terms. I'm gonna put it into the bullets, the A plus content and much more. This ends my master class on SEO. I have over a thousand videos on YouTube. Check out my other 50 of them dedicated to SEO. Watch these playlists next. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. And if you like this video, please give me a like and a comment about what you learned today. Thanks so much.